What's up, everybody? It is 8.30 in the morning. I've been up all night playing Diablo 3. And... Carrie Mora by Thomas Harris. I have a review. This was really short. Really bad. <laughs> I hate to say it. The guy who wrote Hannibal Lecter. He looks like such a nice old man. You got this cool inside cover art and jacket. You got this really nice... It's a really good looking book. It's like gold and foil embossed and everything. And super short. It's only like 300 something pages. I read it in like a day and a half. Um, it is. It was rough. I don't know. It's almost. It makes you think that it's somebody who doesn't have English as a first language or something. Or. It almost reads more like it would be a movie script than it would a book. It's disjointed and it's kind of confusing and it just goes from scene to scene without explaining like how people got there and like just jumps around like page 200 and something out of 300 there was like it just introduced some random new characters that had no point to the story really just and he just mentioned random offhanded things that had nothing to do with anything it just kind of there's a few things that were kind of cool, but then otherwise it's like, it's not written well. It's not like good prose. It's not, even like the text is like a really, really like big. <laughs> it's like not, it just, I don't know how this should even count as a book. It's like, when I was learning to ride a bicycle, I didn't realize that you had to be on like smooth terrain to ride a bicycle well. And so I started out riding downhill on grass and of course a yard is like all bumpy and shit and it felt like that when you're reading it's like it's jarring it's a little bit it's not smooth and i've gotten to the point where now if i'm reading something and i don't understand it or don't doesn't make sense i don't want to just spend all day rereading it and trying to figure out what it means i just kind of like just go on with it just fucking just get past it and maybe it'll make sense later but this never really did um the story's about see i thought it was about a girl in a house that there's gold hidden underneath it some guys find out the gold's underneath it and try to break in and then you have kind of a home alone situation and like kind of like that uh don't breathe movie that i just watched this week it was also pretty good the don't breathe 2 was <laughs> man don't breathe 2 it was kind of funny the guy, he's like this army dude, and he got this girl he adopted from the last movie, and at the end, like her, her real mom and dad are like meth heads, and they try to like kidnap her back, and he's like, he freaks out, and he's like, I'm a killer, I've killed, I've raped, I'm a monster, and I was like, well, you raped? Are you just in the war? What are you, were you raping in the war? It didn't make no sense. It was funny, though. Uh, but this was like, man, it's like really, there's a main, the main villain, I think, is this guy, Hans Peter, who's like a bald, hairless German guy. He kind of reminded me of the bald, hairless guy in, uh, Barry, the guy about the, uh, contract killer guy. Um, so I think they're in Pablo Escobar's, one of his houses in, in Florida, not the one in... Ecuador. Where was he from? Not Brazil. He was from somewhere in South America. Uh, they had this big vault. Kind of like a refrigerator sized vault. Full of gold. With explosives in it. And somehow. They don't really explain like how Hans Peter's group. Knew that it was there. And then it's just like these other guys. Show up. And they know about the gold. So they're like two competing groups. That Carrie Mora, she's like this girl that was in um, South America somewhere, and they were like, they used her for sex for a long time, I think, like a sex slave, and then they trained her to be a gorilla. So she knows like a bunch of stuff. Like, she's house sitting this house, and they're asking her like really technical, electrical questions about like, oh, what kind of setup you got in the garage? She's like, oh, we got. Two of these 120 volt outlets that go down to a main and this splits off into this to a 240 amp circuit and all that. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? How do you know all this? 
I was trained as a gorilla. Helen doesn't explain it. <laughs> She's just like an expert on every thing in the house for some reason. And then, uh, so Hans Peter, there's a scene where they made a, how was he going to break in? They gave him the key to the house that somebody had. But he was going to, like, scratch the tumblers on the lock to make it look like it had been lock-picked. And he's, like, going to sneak in there. And he's talking about fantasizing about, like, jacking off on Carrie Moore's face and getting his jizz in her eye and stuff. And he's, like, he does the tumbler thing. And he's about to sneak into her house. And he's going to be just, like, staring over her bed and stuff. And he's, like, all of a sudden, she just opens the door. And he's, like, oh, hello, I'm Hans Peter. This is my friends. And they're all a bunch of guys. They're just here to work on the house. Or <laughs> not work on the house. They're here to, like... Rent the house to shoot like a movie, and she assumes it's gonna be a porno or something. It's like you just switched from like you were sneaking into the house, and now you're just like there with renting it. Like, what's going on? This is weird. Then this, they start mentioning these other names, and it's like, oh, there's this whole other group, and they're off on a boat, and one guy's got his dick out because there's some chicks that are topless out there, and he's hoping they see him and stuff. And it's like they're trying to get the treasure, and then like Carrie Mora, they tell her to get out of there because you can't trust these guys and she does and then she joins that group that's outside on the boat one guy tries to like scuba dive under the get into the vault and then they shoot him with an arrow and then they cut his head off and they I think one of them put it in a crab trap or yeah they left his body in the place and it's all fucked up and then it talks about how Hans Peter he was like fantasizing about like he like cuts people's organs out and sells them. So he was planning on like cutting Carrie Moore's like arms and legs off and having her just be like a sex potato or something. <laughs> this is fucked up. Like what the hell is this even about? And like I guess it all kind of ended well. I mean she ended up getting the cut of the gold with the guys that got the gold. I mean it was confusing like who who was doing what because they didn't really go into dip depth about the characters because there weren't any time it's just a 300 page book can't go into whole character studies on who's who and who's what but I know there's a guy named Marco and Antonio and Benito and uh, Ernesto I think he was the Don Teflon or Teflon Don right Don Don, Don Ernesto <laughs> I was like I don't know who's the good guys and who's the bad guys they all seem pretty fucked up it's just stupid <laughs> but then I threw this book away and I'm like, fucking Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. I'm already like that far in. Now this fucking thing is good, dude. I did not expect it. I expected this to be like a joke book that they didn't take it too seriously, but they're taking it super serious. This is like Anne Rice Vampire level. And it starts out a lot like Anne Rice too. Like it's a, a modern day guy and a a guy comes in and he's, he realizes that this guy's always wanted to write a novel or something but he doesn't really have time or something and he's like I have something for you and he gives him this fucking Abraham Lincoln's journals and it's like, he's like he's a vampire it's just like when Louis met that guy it was Christian Slater in the movie it like starts out in modern times and it goes back goes to Abraham Lincoln's journals and it's like how he became a vampire hunter and realized his mom and dad were killed by vampire or not his mom and dad but like his grandpa, grandma, something like that. Oh, it's, it's just cool. It's just fucking badass. Um, there's a movie based on it, too. I need to watch that movie when I get done. So I'm way ahead on my uh, Halloween schedule, my plans. So I'll probably be able to fit in, like, another book or two from, like, maybe another Dean Koontz or Stephen King or something. I'll slip in there, so it's looking good. Halloween this year is, like... We're not even in October yet, and I'm already like, this wasn't really a Halloween thing. This was more like a, a murder thing. Kind of fucked up. <laughs> kind of bullshit. I mean, you expect a Silence of the Lambs. That's kind of halloween -y, but this isn't really related to that. It's just the same author. But now I'm wondering if his other books are this bad. But, jeez. 